Hey friends, welcome back to another Wellness Wednesday. I tried to record this on the porch in my regular spot, but uh, the neighbor decided it was the perfect time to mow his lawn. So sitting up on the hillside. First thing, I got my test results back from my SIBO test that I took last week that I showed you on my last Wellness Wednesday. I got the results yesterday and they were positive. So I do have SIBO and um, it's making a lot of sense. The iron deficiency and anemia can be caused by SIBO. It hinders, it can hinder your iron absorption and other nutrients. So I think that kind of makes sense. The test I took measures hydrogen and methane and um, you can be hydrogen dominant or methane dominant. SIBO as far as I understand um, and you can test positive for just one or just the other. Um, I tested positive for both so <sighs> Levi's yelling and running down the hill. Basically you get a baseline breath test at first and then you drink the solution and then you test your breath every 20 to 30 minutes after that for three hours and um, it measures how long it takes for your the bacteria to start producing the methane or the hydrogen gas. And because the large intestine is the one that's supposed to have that bacteria and um, make the gas, it should take longer, you know, for the gas to be showing up in your breath. So if it comes sooner in that first three hours there, it can be a clue that the small intestine has that bacteria and it's starting to eat it sooner. So anyways... At 90 minutes, if your hydrogen goes more than 20 parts per million above baseline, that's a positive test. Mine went up 77. It started at 2, and then at 90 minutes, it was at a 79. So that's definitely a positive. For the methane, if it increases um, 10 parts per million or more, then that is a positive for SIBO. And I think mine started at 0 on the methane and then ended at 90 minutes at um, 12. So above the 10 parts per million. So positive on both, but I think I would be considered hydrogen dominant, but I'm still learning the lingo on all of this. So I think SIBO seems like a really obvious root cause of my iron deficiency and my anemia. The annoying thing is though, is that you're supposed to find the root cause of your SIBO because it can be caused by different things. And if you don't get that figured out and, you know, stop whatever it is that was that caused the SIBO in the first place, um, it can just keep coming back, reoccurring. And that can be a really difficult thing with SIBO. It just, you kill it and then it comes back. Um, so it's just another step along the journey, I guess. <laughs> um, I haven't gotten to the destination yet. I have a good clue. I'm on, I'm in a good, like, I have a good direction of things that I need to work on, but um, it's definitely a journey and it's definitely not finished yet. SIBO is something that I suspected for quite a long time. Um, like I heard about and I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense, I could have that. But my symptoms were not debilitating enough to justify the test um, and the effort to take the test. And uh, like my sister had SIBO um, and she is, it was several years ago and she was having like crippling abdominal pain where she said she couldn't even drink a cup of tea without having terrible abdominal pain. And, um, so it was so bad that she had to deal with it. Like she had to figure it out. And then she found out it was SIBO and she did a, um, antibiotic, a pharmaceutical antibiotic and it totally fixed her and she's been her she says her digestion has been great ever since so I mean there there are some success stories out there um and the the antibiotic didn't destroy her um sometimes antibiotics are warranted and I definitely would do that if I need to but there are a few different treatment options and so I have an appointment to talk to my doctor um in a couple of weeks so I'm going to talk to her. It was to be the follow-up, you know, after the iron thing. So I'm going to get my labs done again, check my iron and some different things like the HSCRP that was high and the ANA that was higher than we wanted it to be. Um, so I'm going to get all that checked and then I'm going to have that appointment with her and I'll discuss like the SIBO and the treatment plan and all of that. So that it's, you know, it's another waiting game trying to figure out what to do next. I did see a really interesting study that came out, I think about a year ago, about using the carnivore diet as a treatment for SIBO. And um, from what I read, I read the, I don't know, the report afterwards or whatever, 
but they had six people and they all did a little bit different of a timeline. One person only did two weeks on a strict carnivore diet and then um, others did four to six weeks, I think. And for the people that did four to six weeks, it, it completely eradicated their SIBO. The person that did two weeks, um, it brought the numbers down significantly, but didn't completely eradicate it. So that's really encouraging. And I think I will be incorporating a more carnivore diet in whatever treatment I choose to do. I'm thinking maybe like the natural antibiotics, like oregano oil and things like that, trying to use that in conjunction with a carnivore diet for four to six weeks and see... Uh, what effect that has. I just don't really know like the protocol, like how much of different things to take. So definitely going to be going over all of that with my doctor and coming up with a solid game plan for that. I also ordered an interesting looking device uh, that we'll see how it works, but um, it's a pretty new thing on the market. It's actually a device that tests and measures your hydrogen and methane in your breath. So it's a breath meter and um, the they had a previous version that only tested hydrogen, I think. And then this newer version that just came out not too long ago um, tests both hydrogen and methane. So it, it the cost is a little bit high, but it's about the same price as one SIBO breath test that you would order from a lab. So I was like, I don't want to have to take these breath tests from the lab regularly, but it would be nice to have a really solid... Um, way to measure these things because I don't have that crippling digestive pain from things. I have some digestive issues, but it's, they can be very like late, like it's not like immediate. And so it's really hard for me to nail down stuff just by my digestive response. So having this meter, I think will be helpful. You can test like specific foods because different people will respond to different things differently. Um, just like with everything. So even even like you can go on a low FODMAP diet and be low in all the FODMAPs. That's great. But FODMAPs, it's a collection of different things. And so some people can have more of an issue with the F or the O or the D. And so trying to like figure that out for yourself can be really helpful. And like being able to have some kind of a varied diet, not go so, so strict just because you're cutting out everything that could possibly be a problem for every single person. So anyways, I'm going to be playing with that and I'm going to see um, what information that gives me. That'll be very interesting. I'll definitely be sharing about that. I think it's really cool that there are more like at home devices that you can have like this because with the SIBO, I mean, the test cost $239. I think that's what it was. And I can't afford, like, I would like to be able to do it every, you know, after every treatment or whatever, because you can do a treatment and it doesn't quite get rid of everything. And so you want to test and then know if you need to do it again, because if you don't eradicate it completely, I mean, it's just going to come right back. And sometimes like with a vengeance and be worse than it was before, which is horrible. So, but it's so expensive and so annoying and time consuming to do the test. So I'm excited about the, um, the device, it, the company is called Food Marble, I think. And then the device is called the Air and it's the second generation Air. So it's the Air 2. That's the one that I ordered. If you guys have watched my Wellness Wednesdays for a while, you know that I'm not like a diehard cut out everything that could possibly be bad for you kind of person. Like I see great value in having variety in your diet and being able to be hospitable, being able to accept food that people, you know, prepare for you. And so this is like a hard pill, pill to swallow for me. I've gone down the path of getting stricter and stricter and stricter with my diet, trying to get to the perfect diet. And I gave that up a long time ago because I mean, you just, you can, you can keep going and going and you never get there. And I've always talked about trying to find the balance between the pleasure that you get from food versus the, how it makes you feel. And you have to balance that. So looking forward at more restriction in my diet and trying to heal um, these issues going on, it's not an easy thing for me because I've gone down that path before and I like found so much freedom by letting go of that. But I've always talked about balance and about how you have to choose what you eat based on not only 
how nutritious and perfect of a food it is for your body, but also like how it makes you feel and your ability to um, enter in socially, like that's all part of health as well. And you have to decide like based on your current state of health um, and your current desires and wants, what, you know, what's more important to you at the time. And with all of this new information that I am getting from these tests, it's like the scales are tipping. And so the pleasure side is like, you know, that's not as important now when I know that I have these issues that I need to resolve. So my diet is going to be changing and I have to kind of accept that and work through that. It's not easy. Um, I was really happy with my diet <laughs> and the freedom that I had within the restrictions that I obviously also had. Um, but I was at a place where I was really happy with my food and the choices that I was making. Um, but now that I see that I, I have longer way to go in healing, um, I need to take back some of that freedom a little bit and that's never easy. So I'm just working through all of that and trying to figure out a good game plan. Part of me just wants to jump into something and just get it done. The other part of me wants to be patient and really think it through and talk to my doctor. And so again, in like that waiting game where I just um, have to have to wait and be slow and intentional and thoughtful about what I'm doing. And that's where I'm at. So um, yeah. I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you guys have battled SIBO before, I would love to hear um, any thoughts or experiences. That would be really helpful. And I will just continue to bring you along on this journey. Every time I think I've arrived and I'm just, you know, ready for smooth sailing, it's like something else gets thrown into the mix and um, just, just going along with it. You're here, Levi? Yeah. I'm so glad to see you. You got one for me. You're the sweetest. Okay, so this is great. I wasn't planning on doing this, but we'll go ahead and do a little promo for Perfect Keto. Because look what he brought for me. I'm not going to eat it. Because it'll mess me up. But isn't that the sweetest ever? Here, yeah. sit down. Sit down next to me. And what did you bring for you to eat? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Yeah? This yeah. is the Perfect Keto Mallow Munch chocolate. Do you like the chocolate the best? Yes. Yeah. There's chocolate, peanut butter, and marshmallow. I like marshmallow and chocolate. Marshmallow and chocolate. And you have blackberry on your face. You're already eating blackberries out here, right? Mm -hmm. You want me to help you open this? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. How it looks okay. like. Yeah, how it looks like. Oh, you want to see? The, show the bar to the camera? Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. And it's really tasty, right? Yeah. Try it and see what you think. Good. Good? Yeah. So right now, I think today is the last day of the Nola Bar sale. They're doing a buy two, get one free, just of these ones. So they're like they're like granola bars, but they're kind of more chewy. And there's the peanut one that's kind of like a payday almost. Hi. And then this one is the most like a granola bar that I've tasted. It's the um, coconut chocolate chip. And then the pecan, is it pecan pie? Maple pecan, I think it is. That one is um, so good. It's like, <laughs> it's like pecan pie. It's really sweet and gooey. And then the white chocolate macadamia nut is just amazing. It's kind of um, not quite a granola bar. It's more of the payday style, but it has the white chocolate chips on stuff. Can you scoot back so I can see myself? Thanks. Anyways, so if yeah. you need some kid snacks, uh, like back to school snacks, stuff like that, the Nola bars are buy two, get one free. Today is the last day, I believe. So hop on that. I will have the link down below. Is there anything else we need to say to our friends on this Wellness Wednesday? Bye. Just bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>